This ridge, located on lower Mount Sharp, shows sedimentary layers, mineral veins, and effects of wind erosion. The rocks making up the lower part of the ridge are characterized by distinct horizontal stratification with individual rock layers of the order of several inches thick. The stratified rocks are cross-cut by veins filled with a white mineral, likely calcium sulfate that provide evidence of later episodes of fluid flow through the rocks. The ridge was formed by being more resistant to erosion than neighboring portions of the layered mountain, and the wind has eroded portions of the outcrop in unusual ways so that elongated rock fragments can be seen protruding into the sky. The mineral veins in the rocks also have presence of hematite, an iron oxide mineral which has been detected from orbit. Scientists are using images like this to determine the ancient environment these rocks were deposited in. The repeated beds indicate progressive accumulation of sediments that now make up the lower part of Mount Sharp, although from this distance it is not possible to know if they were formed by aqueous or wind-blown processes. These blocks of bright, layered rocks embedded in darker materials are thought to have been deposited by a giant flood that occurred when an outflow channel breached the rim of a crater. The magnitude of this ancient flood is indicated by the large size of the blocks which are about 328 feet across. The blocks do not appear to have been moved very far by the flood as they are not rounded however. The bright layered rocks in this image probably contain a record of a wetter, warmer period early in Martian history 
and are therefore a prime target for scientific exploration. This small, relatively fresh crater is Orion Crater. The crater's diameter is about 90 feet and from the small amount of erosion that the crater has experienced, its age is estimated at about 10 million years. Orion lies on the western rim of Endeavour Crater, which is about 14 miles in diameter and more than 3.6 billion years old.
These trenches were dug by NASA's Phoenix Mars lander and the image was taken by the lander's surface stereo imager camera. This panorama shows the interior of a circular topographic feature amid the Columbia Hills on Mars. The entire view covers about 230 degrees of terrain around the rover that took this image. The view shows layered rocks exposed at the edge as well as dark rocks exhibiting both smooth and sponge-like scoraceous textures. To the east of this vantage point, Mikul Hill looms on the horizon and at the base of Mikul Hill is a reddish outcrop which the rover explored during the rapidly approaching Martian winter. Two more hills, Pond Brown and Goddard Hills, are also partially visible beyond the opposite rim of the feature. This view shows the edge of a dark dune field on the floor of a 150 km diameter crater in the southern highlands of Mars. The dunes here are composed of basaltic sand that has collected on the bottom of the crater. The dark dune slip faces are located on the east side of the dunes and are believed to have formed in response to fall and winter winds caused by geostrophic forces. Superimposed on their surface are smaller secondary dunes that are commonly seen on terrestrial dunes of this size. Many smaller and brighter bed forms, most likely small dunes or granule ripples, cover the substrate between the larger dark dunes as well as most of the floor of the crater. The dark dunes also overlie the small bright bed forms, indicating that they formed more recently. In several areas, however, 
The dark dunes appear to influence the orientation of the small bright dunes, possibly by wind flowing around the larger ones, suggesting that both dark and bright bed forms are coeval. The dunes in this crater may be active today, moving in response to Martian winds. Opportunity rover examined some rocks inside an alcove in this location, which is located in the western portion of Victoria Crater. The main body of the crater appears in the upper right of this panorama, with the far side of the crater lying about 800 meters away. Bracketing that part of the view are two promontories on the crater's rim at either side of the alcove. The one on the left is about 20 feet tall and the one on the right is about 50 feet tall. Opportunity's targets of study were rock layers within a band exposed around the interior of the crater, about 20 feet from the rim. Bright rocks within the band are also visible in the foreground of the panorama.